Yeah, cool. Good morning, everyone, uh, and thanks, Darren, for the intro. Um, yeah, as Darren said, the, um, you know, in terms of the topic today, when I was asked to present um, and do a webinar for the ISAF, it didn't take too long to come up with the topic. The, you know, pretty much immediately just said, you know, this is kind of what I want to talk about because, you know, it's a passion of mine to see people succeed. And from personal experience, and you learn from a lot of leaders that you do, you do start with in early careers, having been given opportunity and understanding how, how a, a very good leader in senior positions can help someone develop, which occurred to me personally. You learn from that and then you can see the opportunities that you can help develop others to, to give them pathways to succeed. So yeah, that was pretty easy to come up with the topic um, and, and also without notes, just effectively talk to it because you know it's something that is deeply ingrained in what I want to do. The just looking around different businesses and as Darren alluded to, you know, um, CEO, GM roles and also working in other businesses, but in some roles with a couple of hundred staff looking around and seeing, seeing who's in the business, who can do what. You, you can immediately recognize where there's talent um, and you can immediately see where there's people looking for the next thing. Um, and often, you know, businesses don't necessarily give those people the opportunity. And so I think today we can just give you some, some actual examples in terms of what I've seen and also um, how we can aim to do that and some of the benefits of actually looking within to develop the talent that we have. Um, you know, I think Darren did mention COVID um, and yes, there is an impact and this topic has some definite relevance uh, to where we are right now within the, COVID, within the COVID space. And we can talk about that a little bit further down. But for me, this is a topic that's relevant at any point in time in business. And especially if you look at, at, or at business of any size, the, the ability to, to develop, the ability to give people pathways um, and the value that that offers to not only big businesses, but I think more importantly to smaller businesses uh, becomes very obvious. Um, hopefully as we go through the course of this conversation, but then as you maybe look at your own businesses and some of your own team, um, some of what we talk about today, you can recognize it and use tangibly um, as you move forwards. So yeah, very a, a topic dear to me. And the, I must say, at this point, right now, I'm working in two businesses that are startups. Um, and while we're talking about not hiring externally, um, we have actually just had to hire our first two staff. And one of them is someone who has worked for me previously, who developed and we put through a development program and you can see a latent skill. She grew really well into a position that was a bit bigger than that business. But then now I'm being able to go back and, and recruit, her, recruit her into a bigger role. So her development pathway has been quite significant and her skill set. Um, she's just walked straight into the business we're running now and has just hit the ground running and you know really understands what to do. So for me, that's a real tangible positional, tangible example of, of being able to do that. And who knows where you end up, you know, you, you'll end up with potentially someone you've developed coming back in um, or, or making your business even stronger. So um, as for the topic today as well, um, it's going to come from my perspective as a leader um, and as a leader of people. Um, and the, you know, looking to understand what makes people tick. And it, there is an HR element to it, but for me, this is a people leader element where you're giving people pathways and you need to support and mentor people. And that's where you can actually get the, a lot of the development from giving people opportunities where they may be a little bit nervous or a little bit apprehensive about something, a challenge that you put in front of them or a role that you put in front of them. But if you recognize their ability, you mentor them and support them appropriately, then you'll find that people actually step into gaps that surprise themselves. And, you know, a couple of examples, you know, over recent years, I've put a couple of people into, into new roles that has, that's taken them the best part of three or four weeks to decide if they want to do that because they're so scared. But as they've stepped into it, um, two, three months down the track, they're actually looking for the next challenge. And, and if I didn't go looking for those people, knowing 
um, understanding that word gaps and, and how to develop those people, then you know we w- would never have actually been. We would have to go hire someone, start again, and you know the process would have taken a lot longer. But the value that those people have added to their business have been significant. So we're, that's a, I guess a tangible example in that space. Um, and just symbiotic relationships. If you develop the person, you develop the business, and you know it's a crucial a crucial aspect of it as well. So just um, in regard to the COVID part, you know, at this point in time, there is a, there will be a skill shortage. Whilst there are a lot of people who have been laid off, there are also still the same um, skills gaps that has been existing within New Zealand. And with a lot less migration happening, although there have been 40,000 New Zealanders return recently, not necessarily the skills that were short haven't necessarily come back. So there will still be skill shortages. So where you also see businesses in recent times downsizing, and they've had to due to circumstances that have been occurring, it's really important that if you downsize, that you then be able to have an opportunity to look at this this team that you have remaining in your business and really understand the skill set that they have. And being able to give them the opportunity to take on new challenges, to take on other other skills and, and, and other roles in the business. So whether that is to give them a slightly bigger role or whether it is to move them into something slightly different to cover a need that you've had because you've had to downsize is actually a really, a really significant opportunity for businesses. Because if you can't go out and rehire at this point in time and cost is really important for you, then being able to, to sit back and go, okay, how do we do that? Who, who do we have on the team? Who, what roles do we need to be filled? What skills do we need or what tasks do we need done? How can we get that achieved? And how do we then put the right people into the right place? And just, I work and mentor a small little business at the moment that has gone from, I think, 27 in the team down to about 17. Um, But what we're actually finding is with a complete rejig um, and sort of managing customers' expectations, managing teams' expectations, and going and finding two or three people who have just stood up and shown some real determination and real drive, we've given them a little bit more workload and a little bit more scope and, and responsibility with that. And they've stepped into the, the gap of probably three people and actually worked really hard to make, um, to make themselves successful in the space that they're in. So, you know, I think right now, while you're downsizing, now it's a really good chance, um, a really good opportunity to look for that skill set and to support people to develop up. Um, but, you know, it, it, what it also does is when you do the downsides um, and when you put somebody in um, into a different space, it does give you the opportunity to really sort of backfill roles as well, you know, with, with somebody who you can, who you can lift up who may not necessarily need to move as high up um, through a skill set and through an opportunity, but you can develop people into, into new spaces. So the 17 are actually in the team now are actually becoming a lot more cross-skilled and able to cover each other. And you know, through absenteeism and also people taking holidays, I'd say their ability now to cover the business is greater than when they had 27 people from being able to develop. And that's happened in real time uh, pretty quickly in order to get those people into that space. So that's, a, I guess, a tangible example of what we're talking about today. And I guess where this this topic is is pretty relevant to us at this point in time. So when, uh, when we're looking through, you know, that recruitment place and you go, we have a role and businesses then start to go out and have a look for new people to come in. The impacts of that are not are often not necessarily considered in depth. And you know, in my experiences, having looked through the cost of going and recruiting someone, you know, I can, I'll give you some tangible examples on the way through as we go. In recent times, there was a business I was doing some work with looking to go and recruit. And it was a fairly straightforward role. It wasn't necessarily complicated. But the agreement fee for that role was close to six or seven thousand dollars in order to get that person into the space. We had a discussion with recruitment agents. Um, they put a couple of pe- people forwards, but then we also had the conversation and sat and put everyone in the team down, and then had a look at the team, the existing team, 
and went through them one by one in our own space, in our own headspace with the CEO, asking them the questions. Who are they? What do they do? What are their skill set? Where do they want to go? Just tangible questions that as a leader you should be asking. And we managed to fill two roles that that business had with, by promoting people within it. So we gave those two people a step up and then we only ended up having to recruit one person into the new role, into a role that was a little bit less, but actually the team managed to be downsized, but they got more done and the retention and the, um, I guess the feedback and engagement they had from the, from the people who were actually developed and moved up was significant. But they gave even more than what they were given and they are very happy now to be in, in a position where they're earning slightly more, they have more responsibility, they have more ownership, they have more accountability, and their engagement to that business was, was significantly improved. So tangible little examples, but that also saved the business the best part of $12,000 in order to do that. You know? And if you look at that where your penny's a prisoner, it's very important to make sure that these decisions are, are, are considered. You know? and, in recent times, I've seen a couple of businesses who have gone through and recruited and found that for five months that it didn't quite work out. And then they sit there with a, a credit on the six or seven thousand dollars they spent and going, right, what do we do with that? So, and they're a bit gun shy then of going back. So it take, just take some time, look at the team, be very aware of who is in the team and what you can do and how you can look at things slightly differently. And if someone does look a bit scared that you're gonna give them a promotion, that's not a bad thing, um, and that you wanna challenge them, um, it's, it's a very good thing actually to give people that, that opportunity to develop and make a choice, as long as, as I said before, you support them and mentor them into that space. Obviously, some people have a ceiling, and that's fact. Um, and some people may not have a desire, they may not have a, some real significant aspirations and goals. And that, that is true, some people are happy where they are. But it doesn't mean you don't try. And it also, if they turn around and go, I'm happy where I am, and you know, they're doing what they're doing, then you know, at least you've had a go in order to try to get them there. But some people do have ceiling, and their ambitions are where they are, and you've got to recognise that as well and that's an important fact to make sure that it's taken on board so there's you know if you go through the recruitment piece you, you've got the cost but you've also got the time you know there's a time taken to go through and recruit and uh, for me what i found is the time taken to spend on developing people is actually significant more value to the time taken to going and sitting through interviews to going and putting an ad on seat for 200 dollars and then we probably all experienced a seek ad response, um, you know, where you may get two or three hundred responses, and potentially two candidates that you go, that's worth the conversation, and you're six or seven days down the track, and probably no closer to where you wanted to be. So you know, the time taken there often is actually time better spent than in having two-hour conversations with a couple of your team. And you may well find that there's some latent skills and capability and desire and demand actually sitting at your doorstep waiting to go. So it's just very important that we kind of, we take that as a consideration through this piece as well. The cultural aspect, um, you know, it, these are HR themes, but as a leader, you know, you're, you're the one who will always end up having to pick up the pieces. If it's costing you money, if it's costing time, if you turn around and you go and two parts, you don't give somebody in your business the opportunity to develop, you, they become disengaged or they may become disenfranchised, what it is that you're trying to do. Depending on the size of your team, smaller teams, um, that effect will be felt immediately and by anyone within a, uh, within a working space around those people. And I'm sure you've all seen that happen. In larger teams, you end up with someone who will go and sit in a corner and actually be doing nothing. So those two risks are very real in terms of a cultural piece when you, act, when you have people wanting to develop and you overlook them. So, you know, I've had that experience and, you know, to a degree you do learn from experience, 
Um, we could do go and say, we're going to go recruit someone, put them into a space, and only to find someone come and go, well, actually, I wanted that, but I didn't tell you, but I did, but, and, you know, having a quick conversation with the team and trying to understand what you wanted, what they want to do and where they want to get to, actually adds significant value to, to the team from a cultural aspect on that side. The other side is when you do recruit someone from external, getting that cultural fit is, is really important. Unless you're going through, a, I guess, a, a sea change where you want to go force cultural change and find different things to do within the structure of your business, making sure that you get the right person to fit your culture is also a very important part and can be challenging. And as I said, if you've gone and you put someone in to the business and you know, often I've seen it where, you know, you have a CEO will go and work with one other person and potentially recruit someone. The communications or the considerations of the wider team are somewhat less considered. And yes, sometimes there is a skills gap. And so, you know, you, you may be needing someone for a specific task, but that skills that you're looking for is not necessarily already available. So you'll get someone with a a similar skills gap, but not necessarily the right one, you can end up causing cultural issues within the, as they come into the team, which across a myriad of reasons, um, you, once again, you're better off to have you done, taken the time to look at the skill set within the business, look at the potential of the team. And it may not, it may be someone who is not even related to that role. You know, and, you know, it's, I've taken a couple of people from, somewhere completely different in the business into a completely new space. And they've developed very well into that space. But it, once again, it comes back to the support and mentoring and the intent of why you're doing something in terms of developing a person. And, and you know, knowing that every role is actually a person, not just a role on paper. Um, if you're doing that and you're focusing on the person, then the outcomes are more than likely going to be good ones for the business and the person. So very important part culturally, those two aspects of that that, that I've found. Um, yeah, and but upsetting the existing team is, is probably one of the most dangerous things um, in terms of the, the, the decisions that you make. Um, and if you recruit one person and you're upset the rest of the team, you may well find that a couple of the other, other people leave and then you've got to start all over again. And that has impacts on the business in terms of cost, continuity, um, and everything else. But, you know, and, and often a lot of this is, it comes across and people sit there and go, yes, I know that it's common sense. Um, but common sense and in certain circumstances, you believe you're doing the right thing, you go through a process and common sense can sometimes go out the window. So, you know, this is probably a bit more of a, a, a checklist just to sit back, take your time ask the right questions, scan the team, and don't be scared to give someone an opportunity. It's probably the biggest um, success that I've had is to give someone a chance. And you often find that if you've had the right conversations and you've got people with the right motivations, they will succeed. People, uh, no one goes out there to go and stuff it up. Um, and if you give them the right pathways, they actually go out there to be successful and you'll be rewarded for it for taking that time. And as I said, across a whole lot of things in terms of costs, time, culture, and benefit to your business. So really important parts and you can, a little bit, few line, few little elements lining up um, in the conversation, but you can kind of, you said, once you get involved with the person and the people and you're developing the people, that for me is where you get the most reward to see where they end up. Um, and it may not be in six or 12 months time, in three to five years time, you know, you'll see the value to your business and the value to those person holistically, which for me is an important part. You know, that people are more than, than more than work. And if you can help them do that and their confidence beyond work develops and grows as well, that's that for you as a business owner is actually a better outcome holistically. So that's kind of something that I, I take, I do tend to focus on as well to make sure that is holistic. One of the, um, the, Pushbacks I've often had in, in conversations like this is talking to people and they're going, well, what are we going to go and do? We'll go develop up all these people and give them all these skill sets and we'll get them going 
and all of a sudden they turn around and go, I'm leaving, I'm going, and I'm done, and thank you very much. And I've seen the myriad of responses to that circumstance. The, some people turn around and go, right, oh, that's not very good. Uh, that's a little bit disloyal. I've given you all this opportunity and all that development and I spent all this money and off you go and I'm upset and we're going to part ways. To me, that's, that's the wrong answer. Um, my view is if someone has come and worked in a business that I'm leading and through the course of time they develop themselves to be better skilled, and, and, and improve their capability, their capacity to, to go further. If we can't offer them anything else, because some businesses you get to a point where that's the case, if they leave and they're in a better position to go and better themselves and a better role in to develop, you've done your job. You've actually given them that pathway to go and do that. And it's really important to let people go and to let them go in the right way. Because as I said, I've just re-employed someone who has come back knowing that I can give them further opportunity, but actually their skill set is better. So you end up in a, you know, with a small pool of talent, you end up in a position where you have engaged people, you have better skilled people, and they are improving themselves. And you know, that's a that for me is a great outcome. So my only my my comments on that is don't be scared to develop people. And don't be scared if they do turn around and go, I'm, I'm out of here. If, if that happens and they're better off and they go into a bigger role or, you know, they're going to go open something themselves, you've done your job. And, and that's, that for me is a success as a leader for someone to turn around and go, I'm, I'm on my way and, and I'm there. So a really important part and, and crucial if you sort of go back all the way through the conversation, the topic that we're talking to today. So, you know, I think the, um, there is a number of, we could talk through this conversation and, you know, there's so many elements to the develop your talent and looking within. You know, I've seen a number of large businesses, you know, been through smaller businesses, larger startups. And one of the things I have seen, and, and it's often potentially more of a criticism of some of the larger businesses, is that there is a real tendency, as soon as roles at certain levels come up, is to recruit externally. And, you know, when you see that occur, you know, you do see a lot of experience, a lot of history um, walking out the door and businesses go through the blip. You can see the little downturn maybe lasts for two or three months and the worst cases last six to 12 months. And then people learn what to do and then they, they come back up and they change strategies, they change directions, um, you know, everyone comes in with the, the new games and, and what they're going to do. And it takes businesses in different directions. So, you know, if, if you do look at it, you know, we're businesses of any size, being able to make sure that you do take the time and you understand who's in your team, you understand how you can develop people and how you can put them into different spaces. Um, and don't be scared. You don't be scared. The chances of making a mistake are relatively low, and the chance, of the opportunity to recover from that mistake are actually pretty high and relatively easy. And you generally haven't lost anything. Um, and if you're sitting close enough and you're mentoring, you're supporting, if you're leading, the opportunity for success is high. So you know, I think the number of different elements to this conversation and the for me those are the mics sort of key highlights on what I want to make sure that I get across and from my experience and I could talk for a long time but I think actually being I'm going to leap in and ask a question actually yeah. um because it's interesting that you know several times I've talked about this um like understanding like what are some of the signals that I guess that you've looked for when you when you look to see who who's who is got the potential to be stepping up and particularly if you think um, people aren't necessarily, the ones that aren't putting their hands up and saying you know I, I'd like to do something different what, what do you kind of look for to find those people? Well, I think as an example I've seen I, one I guess one of the last people I, I sort of put through a, a program came in very quiet sat quietly was just sort of doing their own thing but you just recognize that there was some output that was of a certain of a certain quality and at a on time 
And, you know, there was always just something, there was always a little question, a little bit of inquisitiveness, not, not pushy, but just sitting there quietly going, I want to find out about that. I've done this for you. This is happening. You never hear anyone complain about them. Um, you never, you know, you always have the office gossip and, and things going on. You never hear anything and you just have little feedback loops coming from different places going, oh, that's really good, just doing this and really quiet, but that gets done, that gets done. Often it's, it's somewhere, someone's sitting in that space. Um, and looking and for those. Sense. And you, just, you can just observe. If you observe and you see what's going on in the business and you see who's where, those, mm. those are the ones that you often find are sitting there. You know, it's sometimes the one who's noisy and pushy and, and at you is often you know, kind of potentially not the right person, um, you know, but you also, well, you want to give them the opportunity, but often I found the success is with someone just sitting there quietly, just working away, just understanding what's going on, observing and learning, and they know the lay of the land. So looking for those key things. And um, just anyone on who, if you want a question, please type it into the chat so I don't hold them all. Because um, the other piece you mentioned was, you know, and I guess it's part of that too, looking for those more hidden people is the fear. People have a bit of a fear of stepping up. And, and what, what have you done with people around, um, you know, getting them to, helping them with that fear um, and I guess mentoring them through the process of stepping yeah, up? It is, it is that, sitting with them and, and letting them ask questions, letting them come and go. I don't really, letting them say, I'm not sure what I want, what I can do, how I can do that. I don't know how to do this. I don't know how to do the role. I don't know what's, want, what's asked of me. And sitting there behind them and, and actually letting them make mistakes as well and letting them go through a pipeline and say, well, here's three options. You know, you don't give them an answer, you give them options. Here's three options you can go down. Down that direction you can choose. And, you know, I have had the example where we had the same person came or a person came in, put them into a new role. They came across a situation they've never experienced before. I said, here's three options you could take. Um, which one do you want to take? and chose the one that I said was possibly the most risky and most likely not to be successful. Um, she chose to take that one and my choice was to lead her. And five days later came back and I don't think that was the right one, but actually I'm gonna do that one and I've learned from it. The risk to the business was actually low, but her development in terms of thinking about options to take and in an environment she'd never been in, she actually lost the fear. So mm -hmm. she went, actually, yes, I can make a mistake, but actually it's recoverable. But if I take a little bit more time to ask the right question and consider what I want to do and what the options are, then her success rate in challenging situations is going to get greater. So it's tangible examples. So just okay. sit closely with them and give them the guidance, you know, and mm -hmm. don't make the decision for them, but let them be a sounding, or be a sounding good for them. Let them ask those questions. Yeah, great example of kind of giving that space to make a mistake, which gets talked about quite often. But the, you know, the, the reality of doing that, I'm not sure how often it really happens in reality. So looking for those chances where, you, as you say, where you, there are low risk parts in the business where you can yeah. do that. You do hear a lot of people saying, "Don't be scared of making mistakes." Um, but I've come across a number of leaders who don't actually mean that. It's a, it's a nice thing to say, but you, if you say it, you have to live it. And, you know, you do let people make a mistake, but actually then generally if you're close enough to it, it's not going to be catastrophic and you're not going to cause much damage, but the development of someone is, is actually greater than the risk. Yeah. And you talked about that, you know, that really interesting, the impact of, of culture the importance of culture and, um, you know, the benefit of um, developing within um, from people, you know, developing from women and maintaining the culture. What and um, what do you what and your, what's your thinking on what you look for in keeping that cultural fit? How, how do you kind of start to see if people are going to fit or not? By keeping the existing talent or bringing uh, in either the, really yeah. yeah. I, I think, that, you know, from an existing piece where you have a culture um, and the developing people within, and as you put people in new roles and you get their engagement, you know, there's always an energy that comes with that, positive energy that comes with that, be that 
because they're enjoying what they do or they're learning and a little bit apprehensive. You know, there's a, there's a different energy that comes from both of those. But where you do have a good culture in a business and you want to be maintaining that, you want to be, to give it even, I guess, a little bit more vigor and a little bit more, um, you know, embed that culture um, even further by giving people opportunity. That's a really good way of doing it. In some cases, you, you may be in an environment of change within the business when you need to change culture and slightly different conversation. But, you know, in many instances where you have a good culture in a business and you want to be developing and developing that culture, retaining people and giving them new goals and new aspirations and new energy is actually a very good thing to do. And you can see, you often see a business energy and, you know, within their who they interact with as customers or whoever you see that energy, positive energy flow out to that circumstance. So it's mm. very tangible. It, it's interesting actually that point of view, and I know you've done quite a lot of work and you talked towards the end about, um, you know, seeing that you're feeling like your job is done if someone's actually built the skills and capability and then needs to go somewhere else to use those because, you know, kind of out, um, potentially outgrown the opportunities that you can give them. And I know that you've done quite a bit of work around businesses collaboration with each other to develop people. Um, could you share a bit of kind of how that process can work? Yeah, I think the if, when you, so if you from a, a purchasing businesses, um, you know, when you, when you buy businesses and you put businesses together, you know, that creates an interesting challenge. Um, you end up with two businesses coming together and potentially some crossover of skills. Um, and also potentially some cultural clashes. But each of those businesses, you know, was likely successful in their own right. And so maintaining a culture and maintaining the skill sets across those two businesses, however you choose to do that is really important. You don't want to go and, and go and wreck a culture in one business and impose a culture that doesn't actually fit with it. And you know, if you look at that, it's a acquisition sort of collaboration part. But we're sitting with two separate businesses. You know, we at, at this point in time, we're working with a couple of different businesses in different spaces. But we're helping our skill set cross pollinate with their skill set to have a common goal, and letting the teams actually take leadership and ownership of outcomes to develop themselves individually. And we're seeing that occur at the moment as well. So, you know, the collaboration of, of, of teams who sit in different spaces, but actually under one banner, but need to work together, um, you, you know, and they're not fighting each other um, for uh, their own role or no one's concerned for, for their own space, because you can see, yes, there's similar skills, but pathways are quite different. So yeah. and it depends, it's just how you do it. If you, if you set it up to be compet competitive, it's not going to go well. If you set it up to have a common goal and let people make decisions collaboratively and be able to talk to each other, then you get good outcomes. Mm -hmm. I've seen I've seen the example of where you end up with one competing with the other and the outcome isn't good. It, it's never it never is good. Um, anyone who's got just t do type into the chat if you if you've got a question. I've probably got uh, I've got a couple more. So um, and one is one that I asked. Um, Lots of people on webinars. What what's the one thing that um what that we should look to do? I guess, and I, and I know it's probably going to be talking about develop. You know, overall to look to develop within. But there is something that we absolutely should always be doing in this frame in our businesses. What's the one thing we should be? Yeah, is there one with? thing? If I said, what's the one thing? Yeah. I just let people let people own their space. Give them room. You know. Um, don't micromanage, but you know, I think that for me is a really important part. Um, and if you don't do that and you give people pathways and you give them direction, people, as I said, people, no one goes to work to stuff it up. And if you give people the opportunity to grow and develop and, and to head down a, a, an agreed pathway, but in a way that they see fit, you know, there's many ways to skin a cat. And if you don't micromanage, give people the opportunity to go. I think that for me is the one thing that we should do with managing people. And you yeah, know, so and giving them that freedom and space to do things. Yeah. 
Then yeah. realize that there's a person in the role. The role isn't the role in the role. There's a person who's operating in that role and existing mm -hmm. in that role. And they have their own way of doing things and give them that space. Yeah, I love that, that idea of <laughs> wanting someone to use their skills, but then um, turning around and telling them how to do it differently. Yeah. <laughs> because that's the way you want it done. And, and resisting the, um, you know, the, the, the temptation to do that and letting yeah. them actually do it the way they, they um, you know, the, the new ideas that they think and bring with them.